The Her Business by Design podcast is for female business owners looking for inspiration and ideas on how they can elevate their leadership and level up their business and profits. We explore all aspects of business ownership with a particular focus on empowering women to be strong leaders by providing them with the knowledge to cultivate a positive and productive business culture. So join us, Elaine Richards and Tamara Lloyd, founders of Business by Design Duo, for inspired chats with our favourite female business owners to uncover their journey, tips and ideas to help you in business. Hello and welcome back to another episode of our wonderful podcast. Great to see you again, Elaine, and great to be back. We've got a great topic again today. Indeed we have, as always, though. I love our topics. (laughs) I guess that's why we do them. (laughs) (laughs) What's our topic today, Tamara? We're going to be talking about um, difficult staff and when might be the right time to move them on and um, and what you might do before that process and let us put it out there. We're not legal gurus around fair work, so um, always need to get your advice, but just some tips around how to hopefully bring them, I guess, into line with how you want things done um, or bring them into line with your business. But if you can't, you know, how to sort of move them on. Manage and them when, out. When's the right time to do that? I think it is probably one of the most challenging tasks for a business owner, ha- uh, having staff and many staff and keeping them all happy, but having them all work together as one and as a team is um, is very difficult. So, yeah. And it's a constant thing. I don't think you ever – get there and say, oh, I've arrived and everything's going to be perfect now. It's not because different challenges happen. Um, Different people have different challenges personally. New staff come in. So it's a constant thing. It's just, um, I guess, uh, finding a way that you, you know, generally manage these things to make your life a bit easier and obviously um, to retain your good staff and hopefully bring those staff that are a bit more challenging into line so that they can stay within your business. It's actually, I think the other challenge at the moment is people are very wary that it's hard to find staff. So, you know, maybe they're holding on to staff that they wouldn't otherwise hold on to if the uh, workforce was in a different position. So um, we've got to do everything you can to try and resolve things um, before you move someone on. But Yeah, and I think it's important because um, we often have called called it a cancer in our business Mm. and it can really disrupt a business and it's very challenging for your staff Mm. um, to to come to work and have a toxic environment and unfortunately sometimes people can't detach what's going on in their personal life and you know we used to always say leave it at the front door and pick it up on the way out but um, I think we have to show empathy we have to try and work together with people but I think you're right more today than ever it's um, very hard to get other staff to replace ones when you need to actually sit down and have those difficult conversations and possibly move someone on. But I think you need to protect your culture and your business and you need to protect your your quality staff that Mm. are there because if you don't do something as a leader, the Mm. other staff that are, you know, are very important and highly valuable to you, they will make the decision and move on. 100%. And I think the other thing there is... um, at a time, if you've tried everything, and we'll talk through what that might look like, um, but if you've tried everything and that person is still um, toxic within your business and disrupting the rest of the team and you're not enjoying working with them and neither is the rest of the team, then for you to make that call to move them on can actually, um, I suppose, show very strong leadership within your business and give you the additional respect of the team, assuming you've tried everything, um, and also help bring others into line a little bit because they will understand that you're not going to put up with certain behaviour. Um, but unfortunately, if you let it run rife and you don't address it and deal with it, then you're going to end up with a culture within your business that is toxic. So, um, yes, you've you've got to make those hard decisions sometimes and that's part of being a leader in a business. It's just how you do that. Yeah, and over the years that we were together in business and having a lot of staff, we would consult each other and we would talk through things quite regularly. Uh, we would sometimes include our our senior management team on different issues to try and work with those people. Uh, but 
quite often we would outsource and, and get a second opinion. I think it's important and obviously we will touch on later the right people that, you know, you really need to consult with to make sure you do do this right yeah. so and that you for, don't have yeah. um, a lawsuit on your hands, so to speak. But also to be fair to the person and make sure you're trying to work with them and try everything you can to, to get the, the issue at hand resolved for the better of that person or your employee and also your team. Yeah, 100%. So, and with uh, I think also with mental health being um, a very big topic at the moment and wellness within businesses, um, it's also it, you've got a um, duty of care not to just that person that's causing issue but to all the rest of your staff. If you're providing an environment that is toxic and you have a person, the office is doing the wrong thing, you could be liable for not doing something as well. So I think it's, you know, there's a number of reasons why it's really important. But at the end of the day, as a business owner, I want to enjoy the business that I come into. I want my team to enjoy that business. And um, I don't want the the wrong people within that business. If I've tried everything, um, we'll manage that person out or, um, you know, obviously give them the warnings and, and move them on. Depends on the situation, how you might handle it. But your team will look to you because you're the leader and you're the one, the buck stops ultimately with with you. So it's um, it's important to move pretty quickly, I would think, on these these issues and nip them in the bud so that uh, it doesn't fester and, and breed. Yeah. Um, and I think it, you've got to send the right message to yeah. the rest of the team as well. So where's the best place, I suppose, if, if we're going to share with, with our listeners on how to tackle difficult situations? What would be the first thing that you would consider doing, um, just say as an example, someone's come to you, another team member, and they're really concerned about what's going on in, in a certain department and um, what would what, how would you manage? Well, I think to start off with, hopefully you, um, before that person comes to you, I would hope you would have some awareness, but mm. not always. And ideally, even before it's got to that, as you said earlier, you touched on, you need to get onto it quickly because if it's something small, you might be able to sort it out quickly and early without it getting out of control like a wildfire. But if you haven't done that for some, for whatever reason, you haven't realised or it's just happened very quickly um, or, or maybe you've not wanted to deal with it because you don't like conflict, you know, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um then you're going to have to address it. And I think not just saying I'll get to it and then not doing anything. You really, if someone's had the courage to come to you and say, there's a problem, this is a problem, this is what's happening, you really have to address it um, and, you know, find out all about it. You've also got to be careful that it doesn't become a gossip se- session um, and that everyone in the office knows what's going on. So mm. I think these conversations have to be confidential. People need to be aware that they're confidential and um, you know, and then because, uh, again, that will in itself fester yeah. if, if the gossip, you know, wheel gets going. And I think we, we are so in tune with, with people, you know, when someone's off or mm. when they're not themselves. Yeah. So in that scenario, quite often we would take them out of the office, have a coffee and or lunch and just, you know, put them on a neutral ground where we can sit down and just say, hey, how are you going? Mm. How's things? And you just tap in and see see yeah. where their head's at. And it's quite often in that environment that they would elaborate and let their guard down, so yeah. to speak, and, you know. Um, and I think you've got to be careful, uh, depending on what it is, um, what environment, so you don't want other people hearing. So if you're taking them out, just be mindful where you're sitting mm. because um, other people can hear. But if it's a really horrid thing or very... Uh, I don't know, something needs to be dealt with quickly and swiftly, probably um, yeah, in, in your office with the door closed and mm. keep it as confidential as possible. Um, it, I guess it depends on, Absolutely on, on what situation. it is, on the situation. But if you're trying to do a more softly approach, I definitely think taking them for a coffee is a good way to do it, If depending on, you know, if it's not an urgent thing that, that needs to be dealt with straight away, it's more just a touch mm. and see. Um that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I think what we also used to do is we would have performance reviews quite regularly throughout our business. So setting a benchmark for, for where they are, where they want to go, I suppose, and having that great co- connection and relationship and understanding 
um, each staff member and who, who they are and what they want to achieve in, you know, whether it's the next six, 12 months or long term and setting themselves up to achieve that and succeed. So quite often that is a great touch point to, to yeah. sit back, reflect on where they've been, where they're going and what we need to do to support them to achieve that. And it's in that environment as well, which we used to do one-on-one um, and they would fill out a survey, but understanding them and look, let's be honest, your business grows, um, processes need to change. Sometimes it might be from just frustration and I'm thinking from a performance point of view, there's so many different scenarios that could have happened. They may not have been taught or trained the right way or, you know, so we have to... understood something, yeah, you just yeah. don't know. So I think in that environment and that scenario, I think it, it's a great way to understand and, and they will definitely open up to you and, and say share their experience or peace of mind and then from there you can put a plan in place and and work with them but if if you're continually not seeing change and you're continually um seeing them drop the ball or whatever I think there's a benchmark there and then you can go back and say okay well I think it depends has been if there's been an incident or whether it's just an ongoing thing that's festering so if there's been an incident I think you know, bringing them into the office and just sort of saying, obviously, there's been an incident. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, we want to understand sort of what's happened from all sides. We're not here to take sides. We just want to understand what's happened. So let them, hopefully, you know, what they feel is a safe environment. Explain what's happened um, in their own words and just listen without interruption or judgment. Well, yes, you try not to judge depending on what's happened. <laughs> We've had a few doozies. Well, but, we have. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think just giving them that environment to give their side of the story and, and talk fully and if they need potentially someone there with them, um, you know, again, depending on the situation. And we did mention earlier there's a couple of places before you, if, if there's a major incident and you're really not sure the best way to handle it, particularly from a legal perspective, we were always members of VECI, V-E-C-C-I. I can't exactly remember what it stands for, Victorian something. Um, but each state would have their own employment. Um, it's a, an organisation where you can go to for advice as an employer. They um, uh, obviously have all the information from Fair Work, so that it has to be... Um, correct from a legal standpoint and they will often give you example letters and things like that to help you with the process depending whatever that is whether it's giving an official warning or um, a termination Um, you know you can read them to them the contract they won't give you full-on individual legal advice but they can be extremely helpful or obviously speaking to fair work so um, we're not saying we're the experts in this we would always be in contact with fair work or vecchi if we had an issue that um needed to sort of go to that higher level um, and I think that's really important but look I think that communication is the first thing find out all sides of the story without causing a, a gossip you know ring <laughs> <laughs> and then then you need to sit, sit back and assess it and see is it a one-off thing is it something that's ongoing and I think that is a big thing is it a ongoing mm. thing or is it a one-off I love what you said earlier and this is I think really important what are they wanting to achieve long term because I think if you understand that, then you can say, look, we're having some issues around this. It might be maybe the way they communicate with people, for example, and they're a bit you know, rough around the edges or a bit abrupt or whatever. And maybe from their point of view, they're just in a rush and they didn't really realise they're being that. So by you sort of saying, look, you want to be a leader in the business, that's great. We'd love to help you get there. Um, at the moment, the way you're communicating is going to cause you issues in achieving that. So let's work on that. Um do they need to apologise to somebody, mm. you know, having a look at all those sort of things? So um, sometimes you do have personality clashes within the office and that is going to happen from time to time. They might be able to – that they need to, though, be respectful within the work environment but they don't need to be best friends. So mm. I, I think um, it's having all those discussions. There will be a, a time when it's inappropriate to bring both parties in together to have a, a discussion to try and sort things out. Other times that's just going to fuel the fire and will not be helpful. So you're going to need to use... Pick your mark. Yeah, you've got to really think about what's actually going to work and if you're not sure, maybe check with somebody else in the office without, as I said, trying to get everyone involved, but that maybe you respect or go and lean on some, whether it's a business coach or a um, another business owner that you know that might, you know, mm. have been through these sort of situations before. So 
Um, I don't think there's one shoe fits all with this, but I think it is taking a step back, finding out the facts and then seeing if there's a way of fixing this. Is it education? Is it um, setting clear boundaries and, you know, rules around certain things? Um, Are your processes failing? Sometimes the issues are caused because you don't have really clear black and white processes in place. So people think that... It's okay to do X, Y, Z when in fact it's not what you want but you haven't made it really clear. Mm. And I think that's really important when you've got new blood coming into your business and I think if you've had a lot of churn and um, the processes haven't been delivered in the, you know, through the yeah. induction or whatever and, you know, A's doing this, B's doing that, C's doing this, um, there's going to come a time where it's mm. going to go bang and something's going to go wrong. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with you as the leader. Mm. So whether it's a process or whatever, I think um, your team will look to you and if you do not address that sort of behaviour or anything, whatever the issue is, you're going to lose credibility in mm. your business and I think it's going to possibly affect your culture moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've also got to look at things from all sides. Is the person that's bringing you the issue, um, what's the way in which they've brought it to you? Are they somehow causing some of those issues? Is there something they could be doing differently? Um, I'm not saying that's the case, but, you know, you really have to have an open mind and also potentially get your creative thinking and creative hat on as to how you might be able to resolve these issues um, and maybe not pairing up certain people or, or, or letting things settle for a period of time. Um, so there's lots of different um, things that you need to think about before you make and it, it, that's the hard thing. I guess this is leadership, isn't it? It's, yes. There's not one answer for every situation. And I think you've got to do your investigation work. I know that um, so often you might hear something and you might be so annoyed by it mm-hmm. and then you might just jump the gun. You've mm-hmm. got to take a step back, get all the facts and then think about it, digest it and then make a decision on how is best to handle it and it might mean sleeping on it and quite often we would do this. We would come together, we would talk and we'd go, right, we need a plan and then we'd sit down but we wouldn't do it in in the heat of the moment so to speak. But I think um, many leaders in, in businesses find conflict too hard or they don't they don't like it it's uncomfortable and um challenging so quite often leaders might say oh we'll just sit on the fence or we'll give them the benefit of the doubt we'll see how we go i can't afford to lose that person right now my business won't survive there's so many different excuses but at the end of the day i think we need to try and change our mindset because what if that one person was removed from the situation depending on the situation it was, Mm. but if it was a continuation of issues constantly and it was spread throughout your your business, there's got to come a time when you've got to start thinking, uh, you know, differently. You're going to lose more than one staff member. And it's interesting, you know, when um, situations have happened within our business and we've thought how are we going to go on without that particular role or that person – We've always survived. In fact, you've probably we've probably flourished. Yes, other people have stepped up. Um, the right person's come along, or someone from within the business has sort of stepped in to fill that role. Or you know, sometimes it's a few like, okay, we're going to have to move that person on. All hands on deck. You'll yeah. find though, if it's someone that's causing a lot of issues in the office, people will be so relieved that you've removed them from the office that they will all be happy to step in and just help out a bit more until you find that right person to go into that role. So, um, you know, well, that's certainly the culture that we had. Um, and I think the, the, the interesting thing, though, is a lot of this, and I know this isn't the topic we're talking about, but a lot of this could have been potentially avoided if yeah. we've recruited correctly oh, at the start. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and recruiting for culture is important and also doing a really clear induction. Um, and, and all these sort of topics we talk about, obviously, in our boot camp in a lot more detail, but um, you've got to stop that cycle of this happening if it's something that happens quite a bit in your business. Um, But look, you're not always going to get it right. So maybe you've done all the right things and just circumstances. It it hasn't worked out and um, you've tried everything, you've sat down, you've tried to work them through it and it's just not going to work. And then we would look at Sort of, sort of even putting it back on them, what what would you like to do? We, we can't see this working long yeah. term. You know, we've tried this, we've tried this, we've given you a warning, you know, you've done all the right things and, and obviously in the end 
prefer to have someone resign than yes. have to fire them um, because, you know, give leave them with some dignity as well. Uh, you're not there to sort of ruin people. But I think it's also having that those difficult conversations and being open and, uh, with them and saying, okay, maybe you've outgrown this position. Mm. Maybe it doesn't challenge you anymore. Maybe it's time for you mm. to look at something else. And sometimes it's a conversation like that and they know that deep mm. down but then they can go away and think about it and they know and the time is yeah. up. And we've had staff that yeah. have gone, you, you know what, we're right. And I think sometimes though it's the culture in the business and it's because we had such a good family um, vibe, they didn't really want to miss and leave that mm. Again, depending on the person and the situation, um, but certainly when we've had staff that have outgrown and wanted another challenge, that has been the case. So they'll hold on as long as they can because yeah. the team, they love the team and they love the family network that we had in our culture, in our business. But yes. it's a, Look, it is a difficult one. I think the thing to be aware of is that you can't just put it under the carpet and hope it'll go away. It's not going to. So as a leader... You need to really think about it, um, look at how you best handle it, have the conversation, step back, think further and then make a decision as to how you're going to move forward. But and certainly trying to resolve the situation is the first firstly, thing to do. We're not yes. there just to go, oh, we've had a problem, let's get rid of someone. Try and resolve it and and um, and be asking them how so they can potentially, can they see this being resolved? If they're saying, no, there's no way this can be resolved – You've kind of got an answer there. But if they say, no, I'm really happy to try and work it, I really like working here and, yeah, I know I did the wrong thing or I know I could have handled myself better, um, you know, I'll apologise and do all those things, well, look, they're probably – you can they'll, they'll probably come into line. I think, it, yeah, absolutely. If they've got the right um, mindset and they, they enjoy what they do and they can see growth in the business, it might just be that you have to have that conversation yeah. once with them and that's all that's needed because they will step it up and, you know, they will be almost like – you know, it might have been that they've had something in their personal life oh, that's changed. Often that's the case, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And then from here – there's also the appreciation that you've noticed there's something not right. Okay, I need to lift my game mm. and I need to, you know, really step it up. And that's all that's needed and they've been fantastic. But then there's the other ones where it's a constant um, issue and you as a leader and a business owner are getting frustrated. That is not a good place no. to be and that is when you need to say stop and back yourself mm. because your team, you're, you're the, you know, the, the leader and it's the buck stops with you and, you know, you've got to, be mindful that you've got possibly 30-odd staff or however many that are at risk of walking as well. So it's not great. It is not chal- um, it is challenging, but I think in the long term you're going to be better off. Yeah. So And, look, I think that's um, – it's probably one of the most difficult, difficult things as a leader and probably the most challenges that we had was around staffing and when there was performance or behavioural issues – and dealing with those, so definitely sympathise with you if you're going through those sort of things. It's not easy, um, but um, unfortunately, uh, you have to deal with it. Otherwise, you'll just get worse. Yeah, it's not going to go away. No. You can't just sweep it under the carpet. No. But in, I do encourage you to have a chat with other business owners or get a second opinion yep. and um, resolve the issue, or, or be brave enough to take that step, and you're going to be better off for yeah, it. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, hopefully we've uh, helped you a little bit today and inspired you to um, also resolve issues when they come up, not just um, ignore them. And um, look, unfortunately, sometimes you make the, those hard decisions, but hopefully um, not too many of those. Absolutely. And if our listeners have got any topics that they would really love us to discuss or, you know, concerns that they've got inside their business and are unsure, feel free to send us an email and um, we'd be happy to investigate and yeah. And um, also feedback. If, if you're loving what we're doing, let us know. If, if you think we can do something different, let us know. The other thing is to jump on our um, website. We've actually got some free resources there for you, um, businessbydesignduo.com.au, and there's a business resources tab. So jump on there and there's some um, free resources there, also information on our boot camp and all sorts of things that we're doing. So um, feel free to reach out. Our details are on the Um, information on this podcast and we'll look forward to speaking to you next time thanks again have a great day see you later thank you for tuning in and congratulations on getting to the end 
If you love this episode, why don't you hit the subscribe button, share this podcast with a friend and leave a review. Reviews and referrals are the best way to help a small business. If you are interested in downloading any of our free business resources, go to businessbydesignduo.com.au and click on the business resources tab. We're Elaine and Tamara and we can't wait to have you back for our next episode. You can connect with us on socials, Business by Design Duo or go to our website, businessbydesignduo.com.au. Have an amazing day.